moving right along. This is video three, jumping to number seven. Uh, step one on solving any equation is to do distributive property and combining like terms, and you want to do one side at a time. Okay, so let's cover up the right side and look at the left side. Is there any distributive property there? Absolutely. Four times D, that is 4D. Not as in four zero, but four with the D. Four times negative two, that is negative eight. And of course, we are going to bring down the minus 13. So I've distributed, now I'm going to combine like terms. Out of these three terms, one, two, three, are there any terms that are alike that I could combine? Of course, you could combine the numbers with the numbers. So in our heads here, what is, if you owe eight and you owe 13, how much do you owe? You owe 21, right? So I owe 21, and let me bring down the 4D, okay? So I've simplified the left side. Now I'm going to not worry about this uh, left side, and I'm going to uh, simplify the right side. You know what, instead of the rectangle, I know you guys don't have a moving rectangle during your quiz, so it's always a good idea to just draw a little separation line because the equal sign is what truly divides the equation into two sides. Okay, so let's uh, distribute on the right side. On the right side, seven times D, that's seven D. Seven times four is 28. Bring down the plus two. There's three terms right there. I'm going to combine the terms that are alike, the 28 with the two. You can't combine donkeys with numbers, right? Seven donkeys plus 28 numbers, you can't really do that. So the terms that are alike, the numbers with the numbers. 28 plus two is 30. Let me rewrite what, uh, or let me write my ad, final simplified uh, algebraic expression on the right side. We have a 7D that came down and the 28 plus two that's positive 30. Ladies and gentlemen, this right here is my new equation. It's the same equation as above. The only difference is that this is what we call a simplified equation. It's already simplified on the left side, it's simplified on the right side. Now we can move on to the goal of solving any equation to get the variable by itself on one side. So the question is, where's the D at? Is it on the left side of the equal sign? Or is it on the right side of the equal sign? Hey, it's on both sides. You don't want it on both sides. You only want it on one side of the equal sign. So you don't want both of these Ds, so let's get rid of one of them. So you, it's, you gotta think about it for a couple of seconds. If I subtract 7D and subtract 7D, I'm gonna end up with a negative D on this side, which is totally fine. But if you were to subtract 4D and subtract 4D, you end up with a positive 3D. So it's up to you. I mean, I prefer dealing with positives, so I'm going to get rid of the 4D by subtracting 4D. What I do to one side, I must do to the other. Okay, so what do I have left on the left side? All I have is this negative 21, so let me bring it down. Negative 21, bring down the equal sign. Seven take away four is three, and we're talking about Ds here. And of course, I'm gonna just bring down this plus 30 also. There's my new equation. It's even nicer, it's even more simple than the one before. The one before had Ds on both sides. Now I only have D on one side. Now I could focus on getting this D by itself on the right side, okay? So what am I gonna get rid of, the three or the 30? Of course, you get rid of the 30 first. So we're gonna subtract 30, cancels. What you should do to one side, you do to the other, subtract 30. Think about it, you owe somebody $21 and you owe somebody else 30. Man, you owe a lot of money, you owe $51. Of course, uh, let me do this in black to rewrite my equation. Bring down the equal sign, bring down the three and the D, 3D. And this is our final step right here on number seven. You need to understand what it's actually saying. It is saying three times D equals negative 51. So to get rid of the multiplication of three, you're gonna have to do the opposite, which is dividing by three. And what you do to one side, you do to the other side. So you will have, these cancel out, you're gonna have D on this side equaling negative 51 divided by three. Now if you're thinking, man, negative 51 divided by three, go ahead and do that on a calculator. If you don't have a calculator, you could actually just put the 51 in the box, the three outside of the box, and three will go into five one time without going over. When you subtract, you'll have a two left over and a one, and three times seven is 21. So keep in mind that this was a negative divided by a positive, so your answer is gonna be negative 17, okay? So negative 17 equals D, the better looking answer is D equals negative 17. Okay, that's the answer number seven. Let's move on. 
Great, number eight and nine are both already simplified. There's nothing to simplify. They're simplified equations. All you have to do is worry about getting the variable by itself on one side of the equal sign. So uh, any fraction, you could get rid of any fraction by multiplying everything by the denominator, right? Because after all, this does, any fraction is a division problem. So this really does say W divided by 13, okay? If you don't want this divided by 13, get rid of it by doing the opposite, which is multiplying by 13. Notice that I put the 13 up on top. Whenever you multiply a fraction by a number, you put the number up on the numerator position. That way, 13 on top and 13 on the bottom, that's saying 13 divided by 13. 13 divided by 13 is one, so the 13s cancel out. Of course, what you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other side of the equation, so you need to multiply by 13 over there. So what do we have left, guys? We have a negative sign and a W. Okay, so let's write that. We have a negative sign and a W. We have the equal sign, and we have nine times 13, which is uh, 107 or 117? Negative 117. So this is our final step here, changing the negative W to a positive W. So how could you change a negative to a positive? You could either divide by negative one, because there really is a, a uh, invisible one right here. That's really saying negative one times W. So to get rid of a negative one times in front of the W, you'd have to divide by negative one. Or you could even multiply by negative one if you wanted to. So you could say times negative one, times negative one. That way it'll become positive. It'll be, uh, because a negative times a negative is a positive. And of course we want that positive W. So W is now positive because we multiplied by a negative one. What you do to one side, you do to the other. So the negative 117 becomes positive 117. And that is your final answer for number eight. Number nine, uh, again, it's simplified, super easy. Uh, so you don't have to do any distributive property. You don't have to do combining like terms. You move on to your goal. What's your goal? Get V by itself on one side of the equal sign. Here's the equal sign. Where's V at? Where to V at, yo? It's on the right side, okay? So let's get rid of this 19. How do you get rid of the 19? You subtract 19, okay? cancels out. 19 take away 19 is 0. Of course, it's off balance right now. What you do to one side, you must do to the other side. So you owe $7. You owe $19. You're going to owe a lot of money. You're going to owe $26. The equal sign comes down. The V comes down. What else is there to do? Nothing. You're done. That's it. V equals negative 26. But write it that way with the V on the left side and negative 26 on the right side. We are done. Let's move on. Number 10, again, it is simplified. There is no distributive property. There is no combining like terms. On the right side, no distributive property, no combining like terms. And yes, we have fractions. Awesome. I love fractions. Why? Because it scares so many people, but yeah, it's so easy to get rid of. Remember, whenever you have a fraction, multiply everything by the denominator to get rid of it, right? So if you multiply everything by negative five, uh, you'll be able to, to get rid of the fraction. Let me show you. Let's multiply everything times negative five, put it up on the numerator position, times negative five, just squeeze it in there, times negative five, everything by negative five. You're gonna have a new equation that reads P, because the negative five and the negative five cancel out, no more fractions, it's just a nice, beautiful P. And five times two is 10, and 10 times negative five is negative 50. See how easy that is? And of course, uh, we could subtract 10 to get the P by itself, and we have P, equals negative 60. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your answer. Again, you might want to draw a little line showing the left side and the right side of the equal sign. Is this the only way to do this problem? No, there's many other ways of doing it. Uh, let me show you one that might be a little easier for you. But we'll get the same answer, negative 60. Let me rewrite the question. So there's the exact question right here on the side. Let me put a line right here. <clears throat> um, let me show you how to get the same exact answer, but maybe slightly different. Um, Instead of multiplying everything by negative, yeah, we don't want fractions, and we're gonna get rid of the fractions. But what's it easier to do? Multiply three things by negative five, or only multiplying two things? I hope you recognize that multiplying two things is easier. So in other words, it's really simple to get rid of this plus two. How do you get rid of a plus two? Well, by doing the opposite, minus two. What you do to one side, you do to the other side. Let's rewrite the equation. Uh, we have a P divided by negative five equaling eight. Okay, so uh, now let's get rid of the fraction. If you don't want the fraction that's over negative five, well, let's get rid of that negative five by multiplying by negative five. And we do to one side, we do to the other side, multiply by negative five. 
So yes, of course, the negative fives cancel. We have the nice, beautiful P left over. The equal sign comes down and eight times negative five, that is negative 40. You get the same exact answer. It's just done a little bit uh, differently, but it's up to you. Let's move on to number 11. Uh, wow, this one's kind of ugly. It's pixelish. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, let's get rid of all these fractions by multiplying everything by the denominator of the fraction that you want to get rid of. Now, what you're supposed to do is think, if I'm able to find the LCD, the lowest common denominator, and multiply everything by the lowest common denominator, it'll get rid of all fractions at once, okay? Now, you don't have to get rid of all fractions at once, um, but actually, I'll show you both ways. So right here, the LCD. The LCD is 8. Now, why is it 8? Well, because 8 is already 8, and 2 could become 8 by multiplying by 4, okay? So, um... Let's say you had an extra fraction. I know we don't, but let's say we had a plus uh, one sixth, right? Then your LCD would not be able to be eight, right? Eight is already eight. Two could change to eight, but six cannot become eight. So you'd have to think about the numbers, a, a, a certain number that all the numbers could be changed to. So if you had two, eight, eight, and six, all denominators, your LCD would be 24 because eight times three is 24, six times four is 24, and two times 12 is 24. So it all depends on your LCD. And on this section uh, of chapter two, uh, they pretty much give you the biggest number being the LC LCD all the time. So it's pretty easy on this section. So multiply all fractions by that LCD. So let's multiply everything by eight. This times eight, that times eight, this times eight, everything by eight and eight on top with the two on the bottom, that's really saying eight divided by two, and eight divided by two is four, and of course you're gonna have a four up on top, not on the bottom. Over here, eight divided by eight is one, over here, eight divided by eight is one. So what do we really have left? What's our new equation? Well, we do have a four left over on top, multiplied by one, multiplied by y. So four times one times y, that is simply four y. And then we have the minus sign, and we have a one right there because the eight's canceled, there's only a one left over. Over here, the eight's canceled, the seven's left over, the equal sign's right there. So there's our new simplified equation. So 11 originally might have scared you, now it's a piece of cake, right? Let's subtract or get rid of that minus one by doing the opposite, plus one. What you do to one side, you do to the other side. Um, Negative one plus one is zero, cancels out. Let's bring down the four y, let's bring down the equal sign, seven plus one is eight. What do we have left? We have four times y equaling eight. We already know the answer is two, but you need to show your work though. If you don't show your work on the quiz or test, I will not give you points. So to get rid of the multiplication of four, you're gonna divide by four. That'll cancel what you do to one side to do to the other side. You will have y equaling two. That's your final answer on number 11. Let's move on to number 12, another fraction. How do we get rid of fractions? Multiply everything by the denominator nine. So you could multiply this times nine, get 81. This times nine, which will cancel out, no more fraction, you'll have a 5K. This times nine, that'll give you a negative 70, I mean uh, 54, negative 54. So, um, but instead of, I mean, I know we're gonna get rid of fractions, but instead of getting rid of the, instead of getting rid of the fraction as our first step, let's think, is there anything easier that I could do. Anything will make this equation a little nicer. Yeah, I have, I have a nine right here, and if I'm trying to get k by itself, I could easily get rid of this nine by subtracting it. And what I do to one side, I do to the other side, right? Um, so what do I have left? I have a negative five-ninths k equaling uh, negative 15. So now I need to get rid of that nine the divided by nine, or I need to get rid of this fraction, and now that's when I multiply by that denominator nine, and what I do to one side, I do to the other side. So yes, nine over nine cancels. I have a negative five K left over, equaling uh, negative 135. So for my final step here, and again, remember, the equal sign is coming straight down so I could stay organized. For my final step, I am going to recognize that I'm multiplying by negative five, so I need to divide by negative five, divide by negative five. 
and k equals, of course, you could use a calculator, guys, and a negative divided by a negative is a positive. And with the calculator, you'll get positive 27 as an answer right here. Could we have done this one differently? Yeah, we didn't have to get the 9 to get rid of the 9 first. You could have multiplied everything by the denominator. So let me rewrite it. So I rewrote it on the right side right here. Of course, you could have multiplied by 9 to get rid of the fraction, but you'd also have to multiply this by 9, multiply that by 9, multiply everything by 9. So you get a slightly uglier equation, 81 minus 5k equaling negative 73. So the number is a little bit bigger, but even if you did uh, subtract 81 and subtract 81 over here, you'd, you'd still get to the same answer, all right? Now, we are running out of time on this video, so I'm just going to end it right here, but it's always... Uh, Pick the road that you feel more comfortable uh, walking on. Walking. Well, it's not really walking. It's doing math. So uh, whatever you feel more comfortable with, do it. If you want to get rid of the fraction right off the bat, go for it. Or if you want to get rid of this 9 and then get rid of the fraction, go for it. Many roads are the same place. Um, we are done with this video. We're done with the second page. On the next video, we're going to pick up on the third page of the practice test.